Hey y'all, it's Amanda with the Little Bluebird Gallery, art by AmandaHilburn.com. And I wanted to give you some little tips about painting and texture tonight. Um, I learned some new things this week and I shared it with my group, my creative community, my paid painting group. And I wanted to share it with you all too. Um, most of the time when I paint, I'm going to use a palette knife, which is this little tool here. Sometimes I've been painting live and people have said or left comments and said things like, I need to know what that thing is that you're painting with. And that's what it's called. It's just a palette knife. Hi, Beth. Um, I've got several different kinds that I use. Um, this one is my favorite one, the really pointed tip. And when you're painting with a knife, your paint has to be thick enough that it will stick to the knife when you're painting. Hi, everybody. Um, and in the past, what I've done is I've used and recommended a heavy bodied acrylic paint. But I've recently found a little trick that's, that's really helpful. It's going to completely change the way that I am teaching the ladies that are in my group and the paints and the just all of the supplies that I normally would recommend I'm gonna do a little bit of a change and um, I think you're gonna like it so first of all I've told you before actually I did a Facebook live where I used this little graph looking thingy here and I just put some black paint down and then I took some yellow paints of different brands, different kinds. And this here was the cheapest paint. It was, um, let me see if I've got any of it. I believe it was this right here. This, um, you can get at Walmart or whatever. And it was like 98 cents for, um, this is two fluid ounces. But when you try to paint over the black, you could see it through. Um, I also used one of these gold top paints like this that I've recommended in the past. And it did a little bit better, but it was still showing the black through there. And then I used a heavy bodied acrylic paint like this. And I put it down over the black and you couldn't see any of the black through there. And it's because this paint is so much thicker. However, it's a whole lot more expensive also. So in my painting group, I had been recommending that everybody start out with this kind of paint because they would get so frustrated when they were trying to paint with their palette knife on um, the canvas. The paint, if it's really runny, it just won't stay on your palette knife and it's hard to manipulate it and make it do what you want it to do. So that's what I have recommended for the past several months um, since we started the group was to buy the more expensive paint and that way you won't be so frustrated when you're trying to create something with texture. For example, um, this painting here was done with a palette knife and it does I've got cat hair flying around. It does have a lot of texture to it. But, um, I didn't use the heavy bodied acrylic for all of this. That's what I wanted to talk to you guys about tonight. What I've learned is, well, let me tell you this first. I like the heavy bodied acrylic. Don't get me wrong. The problem with it is, let me show you my little thingy over here. I'm going to try to keep you from being dizzy, but this here is where I keep all of my paints. And if you can see, there are lots of shades of blue and lots of shades of green and pinks and oranges and, I mean, flesh colors and taupe and greens. And they're all in in these bottles here not in these tubes here when you are trying to learn how to paint let me turn this back 
when you're learning how to paint and you're learning the technique itself, it's really hard for you to learn the technique and mixing the colors also. I'm not an expert at mixing colors at all, but I mean, you can get a little color wheel like this. It helps you to mix your colors when you add when you add white, this happens. When you add yellow, this happens, and you'll get this color, that color. But still, it makes it really difficult. Um, if you wanted to try to get something this color, you're gonna have to use a little bit of blue, a little bit of green, a whole lot of white in that heavy bodied acrylic paint to get this color. So, these craft paints come in every color that you can possibly imagine. And they are thicker, some of them are thicker than, say, this kind that you would get just at Walmart that's, that's pretty thin, but they still weren't quite thick enough for using with my palette knife. So, what I did was I was trying to experiment a little bit and in the past, I had tried mixing this kind of paint with just some molding paste or modeling paste. Some companies call it modeling paste to try to thicken it up. But what would happen, I can't get it open. What would happen, see that's the, the molding paste, is it would change the texture of the paint too. And I didn't like the way it looked. It almost looked gritty, if, that's, if that makes sense. So, um, I tried that and it didn't work out for me too well. I didn't like the way it looked. But a friend of mine just gave me some advice last week and said that you can use a heavy gel medium, which is what I already had because I use it when I'm doing collage and I'm, I use it as a glue to hold down things like this on the canvas or on my um, piece of wood or whatever I'm working on. So. I've been using this already, and it's, this is just a Liquitex Matte Gel Medium. So, if you can see, it's thick too, and if you mix this with this, you get a heavy bodied acrylic paint that will work with your palette knife. And I'm so excited about it, because that means <laughs> all you got to do is take some of this and some of this. And you can use any color that you want to use. I've even been using some of this cheaper paint and mixing it with this and making my own heavier paint with more volume. And it's working really great. Um, here's an example of something else that it also does. I was playing around with these the other day and when I painted these wings, can you see those cracked areas right there? What I did was I put on, I just took my palette knife and the really cheap paint and I just really put it on there. And when it dried, it cracked. So, what I did the next day was use some of the same brand of paint for this yellow, this yellow section right here in the middle, which has a whole lot of paint built up there. But this time, this is, this is actually, this paint right here mixed with that gel medium and it did not crack. I put layers and layers. I mean, it's really, I don't know if you can see how thick it is, but it's really thick and really textured and it did not crack at all. It's still got lots of great texture. So it just makes it the elasticity of these cheaper paints um, a little better when you're using a gel medium. I've also ordered some more. This is just a regular gel medium. You can also get the heavy and I think it's called maybe ultra heavy. I can't remember what the other one is, but um, on my website, up at the very top on the right, it has the word favorites, and you can click on that, and it'll take you to all of my favorite products that I use, and I've added this and 
the heavier one too in there. You can order it from Blick Art. And that's the cheapest place that I've found it so far. I think it's like, I think it was $12 for one of these. So you can use all of your colors of craft paints and just mix a little bit of this gel medium with it and it will hold up. I'm gonna show you a little sample of it here on my table. So I'm just gonna use this again because this right here, if you can see, this is where I took, well, what did I do with it? This, here it is. I took this cheaper paint and I made a streak here with my palette knife when I did this before. So let me show you what happens. I'm gonna move my camera down so you can see my table. And hopefully that'll be, that'll be good enough you can see. So I'm, I can't tell you how excited I am about this y'all because especially this Deco Art Americana paint, these are some of my very favorite colors. They have one called Whispering Turquoise and I used to put it in all of my paintings. I, I had some blue in everything that I painted in the beginning when I was using a brush. But then I started using a palette knife and it was harder for me to use those so I didn't. I had to kind of back off a little bit. I would still use them here and there. But um, anyway, this is really really exciting for me. Alright, so here's this paint here. Whoops. I'm going to show you. It just pours out. And if I use my knife and just pick up some of it. See, it's not it's not holding up very well on my knife. But I'll just make a streak here with it. So you can see that black through there. It's really thin. Okay, now I'm going to mix it with some of this gel medium. Another great thing about the gel medium is unlike this molding paste, it does not change the consistency of the paint. It still has that same look and feel and the color is exactly the same. The color does not change at all. But you see how thick that is now? So here's where I did it without the gel medium and here's a streak with the gel medium. It's just really, really thick. It works really well with your palette knife. And that's with the cheapest paint that I have mixed in there with it. So that's a little tip I wanted to give you guys. As I learn new things, I like to share them with you so that you can, can learn too. Um, and I, like I said, I shared this with my painting group a few days ago. And we're all really excited because now we can use all of those really cool colors that we want to use out of the craft paint sections. Um, I don't know if any of you have a question. Let me go back and see your comments. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, yes, um, Jane said that's what she loves about craft paints. They're pre-mixed. It's so hard to mix paint and learn how to do that. Um, and thank you. Those angels are, are some of my, my new pieces, and we're going to learn how to do those in February in my painting group, too. Um, but as far as, as different kinds of mediums go, the gel medium is the best thing to use if you want to thicken up your paint and give it some volume. It actually says that on the label. It says that it extends paint volume, so that's one of the one of the purposes of it. And it is a little bit expensive, but 
it's not more expensive than it would be if you were trying to mix these heavy body paints to make the colors that you want to make. So, like I said before, if you wanted to make a peachy pink color like this, you would have to really mix a lot of different colors and try different things until you got this color to use where with this you just use this paint and mix it with a little gel medium and you've got a thick paint to use. Uh, Kathy says, what do I use to make the angels very shiny and glossy? This also comes in gloss. This is a matte version of this gel medium, but it can be used, let me see, this is the gel that's thick, but they also make something that's like a, it's like a Mod Podge, but it's thinner. Let me squirt some out and show it to you. And you can get it in a gloss also. So, see, it's really, really runny. You can see that. And you can use that on top of your finished painting. And it will give it that high gloss look. So, the... Um, Liquitex medium, you can get a gloss medium instead of a matte medium. I always use the matte medium, but um, they make gloss also. And you can use your coupon at Hobby Lobby or Michaels. And like I said, if you want to order it online, BlickArt.com has really good prices. That's where I've been ordering my canvases and um, the Liquitex items. That's where I got my palette knives the last time. But I think it's I think it was about twelve dollars for one of these from Blick Art. And a friend of mine said that it was about fifteen at Michaels, I believe. For it may have been a a size smaller than this that was fifteen. I don't remember. But um you can compare prices in different places. But either way, um using the gel medium and the less expensive craft paint is going to be a much better deal for you when you're painting. And especially if you're just starting out, um, and even me, I like to do things quickly. I don't have a whole lot of time to just sit and try to mix my paints and get the perfect color. If I can just buy a bottle that's already the color I want it to be, then I'm going to just buy that bottle and mix a little something with it so it'll hold up and work well for me. But, um... Anyway, do y'all have any other questions? I'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. The great thing about this gel medium, too, is it can be used for so many different things. It's not just for um, thickening paint. You can use it as a glue. You can use it as like a, a top coat, like I mentioned before, on your, your paintings to seal them. And if you do any kind of mixed media, then you probably already have some. Uh, Beth said, what was the first thing? The first thing I had tried was called molding or modeling paste. And it's just, I don't even know if I can show you what it's going to do. I've got a painting up there that's got some on it, but it's up high and I can't reach it. If I mix some, it, maybe I can show you. The consistency of it it's just a lot different. See, this is the modeling paste, and it's almost chalky-like, which is cool for some things, but I wouldn't want to do a whole painting that looks like that, where the gel medium, the paint still just looks exactly like paint. It's not that much different at all. Y'all have any other questions? You're welcome, Kathy. So, I've ordered a few new things to give a try. Uh, what do you use? What do I use the modeling paste for? You can use it. Um, oh, I wish I could reach that painting up there. I use it most of the time when I'm doing stencils. Um, yeah, it's more like a joint compound. That's right. It's uh. It's got a, a sandy texture to it almost. It's not smooth and creamy at all. 
it's more of a, a gritty texture um, but you can use it a lot of people use it just to build up um, areas on their their paintings and stuff like with my stencils that I use to oh, let me grab this when I don't know if you've seen me use one of these stencils or not that's where I would lay it down and just put this modeling paste over it and it would leave you know the the texture there so it's 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 just a completely different texture that adds a little bit of something different to mixed media paintings is what I use that for most of the time. But just on my regular acrylic paintings like this, I don't want it to have that gritty, that gritty texture to it. I still want it to be smooth. And so, if that makes sense. Okay. And, see, I've got some metallic going on here too. You can add the gel medium to your metallic paints and it's still going to give you that metallic look. It's not going to change the color or the the shininess. I don't know what word I'm trying to say, but if we tried, if I tried to, um, blah, blah, if I tried to add the metallic to the modeling paste, I'm getting tongue tied. Then it's going to completely change the consistency of the paint, and it's just not going to turn out the same. I was really excited about this, so I wanted to share it with you guys, and I wanted to invite you all to come into my painting group, because we're going to be doing angels this next month, um, something similar to this. We'll have some tutorials on the backgrounds, and the texture, and um, things like the hair, and the composition of them but um, we may do some church buildings also I'm not sure yet we may just stick with with one theme but uh, thank you Tammy but uh, and Melanie thank you I've uh, I'm really excited about doing these in the group next month and uh, I've got some other ideas too we'll probably do some tutorials like this and maybe some that are just wings. I've done some some textured just wings without the body here, you know, and uh, maybe add some stamps and things to make it a little more mixed media. But um, anyway, if you're interested in joining my, my paid subscription group, we're going to be doing this in February and some other cool things. And uh, you can, I'm going to put a link in. I'll put a link in after I finish the live video. But you can go to artbymandahilburn.com and learn more about my painting group. And I hope these tips helped you. I know that they were really exciting when I found out that I could do this for me. And um, if there aren't any more questions, then I guess I'll go and I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for joining me. Bye.